Hello everyone, Shay here again. This is part two of my video for riding from Medellin to Jardin. Uh, in this video, I just want to share my trip uh, while I was on the motorcycle, tell a few stories, and uh, explain where I went. So, on October 26th, I landed in Bogota and had a flight booked that same night to go up to Medellin a few hours later. Uh, the weird thing about being Canadian and entering Colombia is that there's some kind of diplomatic dispute. I think it was started by Canada where they started charging money to Colombian people entering the country. So then Colombia did the same thing and so it was like a two hour wait for Canadians in a separate line from everyone else that wasn't indicated anywhere it was for Canadians and they're processing like one person at a time five minutes per person and you have to pay like 201,000 Colombian pesos to enter the country which comes to about 80 bucks Canadian so kind of irritating but whatever managed to get into my flight even though it was like 30 minutes before departure they let me check in so I flew to Medellin, landed in Medellin, uh, got on a bus to get into the city, and one of the first encounters I had with a Colombian person outside the airport was this cute kid right in front of me who was sticking his tongue out at me in front of, in the seat in front of me. I thought it was kind of funny. So I took a cab into the city, sorry, bus into the city, cab to the hotel, got to the hotel around 2 a.m., got a few hours of sleep, woke up, met Jeff from Columbia Moto Adventures to rent my bike. We stopped at Pablo Escobar's cemetery on the way out of the city. Uh, here's a picture of me here at his grave. Here's another picture of me about to get on the highway on my own, fully geared up. And it was a little bit after that that I started recording the video that we're watching now in the countryside of Colombia on the way to Jardin. So some nice views getting to Jardin. There's a couple pictures here. Uh, when I reached Jardin, it was uh, just a pretty regular hostel, a little bit outside of the city. At the hostel, I went out for food with a German guy and a French guy. So I was telling the French guy this story about when I went through this toll booth for the first time on the way up to Jardin, and I took the car lane instead of the motorcycle lane, which I didn't realize was to the right. And I was in the car lane, which is what you're supposed to pay. And so uh, they told me not to go through that lane and it took me like a good little while of holding up the entire lane so that I could like reverse my bike, turn it around, and then made the whole lane of traffic back up and then like finally get my bike over the curb and magically somehow with the help of some friendly Colombian dude who was just like hanging out at the toll booth and I was just telling them about how I was I was that guy, you know, and I was like, ah, they were probably shaking their head at the tourists. And then the French guy just goes nailing that 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 French contempt. He goes, yeah, they were probably like, ah, fucking tourists. <laughs> so yeah. Um, on the way back from dinner with those guys, I found a we walked by a circus, a random Colombian circus to uh, go back to the hostel and I'm like there's no way I'm just walking by the circus right now and I look to those two guys I'm like we're going in there right and they're like uh, we're kind of tired and I'm like boy seriously like we're gonna walk by Colombian circus I'm not gonna go in give me a fucking break and they're like nah I'm like all right see you later I go inside this Colombian circus uh, by circus what they really meant it was just like this big tent and like <laughs> they had like a couple dancers come out and then they had this like clown 
like the classic like red nose big shoes like funny dressed up Colombian clown come out and basically do like a performance um it was pretty funny I didn't really get a lot of what he was saying but because it was for like kids you could kind of still get what some of the jokes were and it was pretty hilarious um just to witness that (laughs) uh I was a little worried the clown, because the clown was interacting with the crowd, I was a little worried he was going to come up and give me the mic in front of everyone, and just start making fun of the only gringo in the crowd, but it didn't happen, so all good. So I eventually just dipped out of that, uh, went back to the hostel, got some sleep, and woke up the next day to start the epic ride that was Jardín to Pereira. So when I started the ride to get to Jardín de Pereira, I'd reached a point in the road where it started getting like pretty jungly and the road was just like rock and mud. And I had a, a moment where I'm like, should I even do this? Should I just go and take a long way where it's paved? And I'm like, fuck it. Obviously I'm here now, I'm just gonna do it. So I got off the bike, put on the rain suit, and then I started going up, and uh, it ended up being probably the best ride throughout my entire trip. Uh, the weather was great. I had like sunny blue skies the entire time. You'll see in the next video. Um, it was I just had the most breathtaking views the entire time, driving along this little rocky road, going through jungle going through the top of the mountains and you know passing by these little farms and like these neat little properties just tucked away up in the mountains of Colombia um the occasional like moto bike driving by apart from that the road was all mine and um that was an experience I've never done anything like that um so I did a few hours of that, stopped in Rio Sucio, which I actually wound up stopping in for a night later on, I'll get to that later, for Halloween. But um, I stopped in Rio Sucio, got lunch, and kept going, and then I reached a mountaintop, perfectly paved twisty. So I started ripping it through this mountaintop road and to my left is uh, just like valley and mountains and then the clouds were like felt like a a sort of like a a ceiling because you're so close to them so I'm ripping through this twisty going into the curve and just seeing the most beautiful views next to me Um, post a few photos here that you can see, you can kind of get a better look at what I'm talking about. Uh, At this point, it would have been nice to have the GoPro on my head. Uh, It wasn't really an option because of the helmet I was wearing. It wasn't, like, didn't work for the kind of headband thing that I had brought. And I did also like the GoPro on the bar, but without realizing that it was gonna be like all shaky and stuff. I tried to fix the shakiness in Adobe Premiere, but it ended up completely mangling the video. So I don't know, I'm probably just amateur. I had no idea what I was doing. So I'm just leaving it the way it is, whatever. Um, After the mountaintop twisty, uh, I drove down uh, a highway that went through kind of a valley, like lower land all the way into Pereira. Pereira in Colombia is a somewhat mid-sized city. Uh, Jeff told me to go there because he said it was just like super chill. Everyone's awesome there. He said it's called, the, the nickname is like the city with the open arms or something like that. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. So I got to this beautiful little hostel that was off to the side of the city, but still in a good location. And, um, it was called Colibri Hostel, and it's 
I think the word for in Spanish for colibri is uh, it's the word for hummingbird. So you get hummingbirds up there. Unfortunately, I didn't see any, but it was a really nice hostel. And uh, that night, I went out, got some food, had like this epic um, meal, and I was just having a great day. I uh, had a bit of a rough encounter with this street kid. Uh, I posted a video about that a little earlier. I'm not going to get into it here. If you want to go see it, uh, I recorded some thoughts on that right when it happened. A little rough. But um, after that, I went to, uh, went to the bar and uh, had met a few people, had a few good time. Had a few drinks, saw a couple things, and then uh, some guy kind of made me a bit uncomfortable at, at the bar. It looked like he was trying to mess with me because I was clearly a tourist. Gave me some like slushy drink where I think what happened was uh, he like put a huge amount of alcohol into it, and then there was like some kind of weird slushy taste that I think was just masking the amount of alcohol he gave me. So I ended up getting like way too drunk and I'm like, okay, it's time to go home now. And I wound up uh, going home. So um, the next day I wasn't feeling great. So I was like, I should go to those thermals everyone was talking about. Nice ride to get up to the Termales Santa, Roro, Roro, Santa Rosa. And uh, that was wicked. Uh, really nice waterfalls, nice like kind of like hot tub pool thing. And uh, got like a $20 massage at the spa. It was like a deep tissue thing, I think, which is the one where they like drive their elbows into your back and you're actually like, wow, this really hurts. But hopefully it feels better later, which it did. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, sp spent another night at that hostel. So I woke up the next day, and my destination for that day was Salento, which is the kind of famous coffee producing region with a really nice town there. Uh, I was stopped at a wildlife sanctuary slash national park called Utun Kumbaya, I think is how you say it. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I took a private tour through this jungle. It was pretty cool. Um, it used to be this old colonial property and they had like clear cut the forest. Uh, they had like, it was cool cause like they had these old Roman baths sort of thing in the middle of the jungle. And um, the guy was saying that the whole forest was completely regrown over the last few decades so that was pretty nice only thing is I didn't see a lot of wildlife uh, just like we were just kind of looking at plants and stuff a lot um, after that I dried off and continued down towards Salento I drove through some amazing back roads again uh, it was a really rainy day so it was like see all the fog and clouds um, up high around the mountains it was uh, it, it was kind of cool to be driving through that kind of weather even if it wasn't the most comfortable sort of weather so um, I reached uh, before stopping in Salento at the hostel for the night I went all the way to another tourist site called Valle de Coquera and uh, it's this valley that has the tallest palm trees in the world. So I took a few photos there, did a little hike thing before losing my breath, and went down, back down to the motorcycle, and Salento wasn't that far, so I just uh, went all the way back to Salento for the night, stayed at another gorgeous hostel just up in the a little bit far out of town but in just beautiful view just woke up to this like uh, just 
overlooking just the most nicest view with like the best freshest Colombian coffee it was just such an epic way to start the day and um, I got approached by this Australian guy Elijah who uh, was also riding a motorcycle so we hit it off right away he was telling me he had been on the road for seven months on this tiny beat up piece of shit 1980 something Honda 250 look at this thing uh, first thing you have to notice is he's got <laughs> British Columbia fake plates on the back that's just like a printed piece of paper laminated <laughs> okay bud <laughs> his reasoning for British Columbia was that it's like half of I guess like has the word Columbia in it <laughs> and then look at this tread He's got, like, completely bald tires back there. I'm like, but, come on. He was saying he wanted to sell it soon, but uh, that that's why he didn't change the tire. But, I mean, that's pretty dangerous. I wouldn't drive like that, but, I mean, I don't know, he seemed to be all right with it, and uh, he's probably fine. So, uh, me and that guy and uh, a few other people walked down into the coffee region. Um, I couldn't do a full coffee tour. I had to get on the road to uh, get back to Medellin that day. Um, took me quite a while to get back to Medellin. I had to drive through Pereira, get through traffic, had a bit of a late start or whatever. Kept hitting these stupid construction sites on the highway where uh, you had to come to a full stop for up to like I don't know, 10 minutes at a time while they did some work before kind of letting the traffic pass. That happened so many times and uh, Jeff suggested I take a different way. Uh, what ended up happening was that way was way longer than either of us expected. It was a beautiful road. It was amazing. Like the, I had some of the nicest sights I had seen. Probably took one of the best pictures I've taken in my life on that road. And um, next thing you know, it was dark and I had reached Rio Sucio and I'm like, I don't want to drive back at night all the way to Medellin. It's another few hours. And also it sounded like a storm was coming. So I said, uh, fuck it, I'm just going to get a hotel here. Uh, I tried to, f the, I found the nicest hotel in the whole entire town <laughs> and it was $20 Canadian. <laughs> for this like pretty decent sized room with like a big queen bed and like two bunks I guess it was like a family room um the funny thing was the shower uh didn't have hot water so that was like the only weird thing and look at this picture of the shower head um now picture like water coming out in a single stream like that so I was calling it the penis shower <laughs> Um, so yeah, and that was, that, that uh, so I finally settled, I got changed and whatever at this hotel, and then I realized, like, I went outside the hotel, like, go get a beer or something, I see people watch, walking around in, uh, Halloween costumes, like, oh shit, it's Halloween right now, it's October 31st, 2018, and, um, I'm like, okay, cool, like, this could be fun, and, um, just cruising around this town square getting beers and there's just more and more people piling into this square for this like huge Halloween party they had this like dance uh, set up and like there was crowds of people and it was just around like 8 9 o'clock p.m. it was just completely packed thousands and thousands of people packed into this square and I uh, just kind of cruised around, just took photos, just laughed at all the things I saw, um, kind of drank a bit, whatever, and uh, just kind of called it a night eventually. And um, next day I just drove back to Medellin. Uh, good guy Jeff didn't charge me the extra day because he kind of told me to go that way, which ended up taking longer than both of us thought. He didn't charge me which was awesome, thanks Jeff, and uh, returned the bike to him after a bit of a struggle in Medellin because my data cut out, 
when I was driving through the city. And uh, yeah, that was the end of my motorcycle trip. <laughs>